Hello, and welcome to another Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Explorer we're going to take a look at uh, a recent app called Groovity. So let's go take a look now. So here's Groovity. It's basically moving a bunch of things along grooves like you would find in a dentist office or a doctor's office. So a kid's app. Wee! Groovity. Oh, I want to catch the bus. <laughs> I want to catch the bus. Uh-oh. Wrong way. <laughs> Whoop. So, fun, huh? And what we're doing now is making a PWA, which will allow it to uh, Groovity, which will allow Groovity to be loaded as an app. Um, but when we put it on the iPad, we've got a 1024 by 768 dimension. And when it goes on an iPad, we actually need a 1024 by 7. 48 so there's 20 pixels along the top for a little bar which meant we were starting to see a little uh, light on the sides here so we need to cut it down in height and as I was doing so we had to make some modifications to the paths as well because uh, they didn't quite fit in and I had been wanting to show you and explore to show you how we made these paths and so that's what we're doing now I'll just take you through the groovity things. This one was fine. Its bugs uh, were good. <laughs> uh, this one had some problems. The snake, you can, you can see the snake goes quite close to the top there. Well, the snake, when we cut off 20 pixels from the height, was going, hitting the top, as were the antenna of the bug here kind of took off both sides of it. Wee Monkey seem fine, I guess. This one was all right. We had to adjust the cloud or the tree here, the tree <laughs> cloud. The tree was hitting the corner of the button. I would have already actually made an adjustment to the tree. It's not really a path. There's a bicycle. That's a flip, by the way. You see how the bicycle is flipping? We could have done that with the car as well. As a matter of fact, we did, but it just was a minor flip. It was sort of slanted a bit more one way, and it just looked slightly odd, so we simplified it. By, and same with the bus from earlier. That's the kid's bus still. Here's a train. And a city. And we're back to the beginning. So the meatballs, this this meatball right here is too close to the top, so we'll have to bring this path down a bit. And so we'll make that adjustment. We hadn't really talked about it. No adjustment was needed there. Uh, no adjustment was needed in the space. No adjustment was needed in the water. No adjustment was needed here. So some adjustments, yeah, okay. So we're good. Let's take a look at the code now. And is this a local? Yeah, this is local. So we will change this. There's us bringing in, so each page basically is a JavaScript file. Here's our main JavaScript file. We'll take off 20 pixels from that. And then when we run it, we can see some of the the things that are happening. Uh, the meatball is now going off the top there, so we'll need to go in and adjust that meatball. Everything else looks pretty good there, though. I think all these meatballs seem to work just fine. Or they're mushrooms if you're vegetarian. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Soy balls. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so meatballs. We'll go into the noodles then, right here. Noodles was what we made first. And we'll check out what we've got going on here. So there's noodles. Oh, okay. Well, this is a little bit uh, trickier because we have 
how many noodles? Are there four? One, two, three, four, yeah. One, two, three, four. And what we did is we abstracted that into an array so that inside a loop we could just do the path in the meatball once. Um, we're setting the meatballs to start at a certain location and adding little inside circles to the meatballs. So otherwise, if we didn't do that, we would have to do this path, this meatball, all that kind of stuff for each one of these. So when we recognize that pattern, that they were all pretty well the same, we could have we could have made that a class, uh, like an I don't know, a past a class or something, and you know that class would have included possibly the noodle and the meatball and how it operates together with the dragging. But uh, we didn't. We just threw it into. If you're going to en like engine something, if you're going to make something over and over again, you don't necessarily need it to be a class. It could be uh, just put in a loop, so a function in a loop. We're never gonna we're never gonna make a meatball again. <laughs> Most likely in some other application, we're never gonna make a noodle with a meatball moving along. <laughs> so um, classes. Uh, if it's just a bunch of functions, or if it's just a function that you want to run over and over again, really, you don't have to make it a class. If it's, it's probably handier if you think you're going to use it uh, in other applications. Then, if you make it a class, it could perhaps be more transportable. You could put it out in a module or something. Anyway, blah blah blah. Um, so. One thing is to test this back on the index here. We created a build true. So this is us saying that we're currently building this. When we set build false, that means it's it's uh, a final version. And this allows us to see things more quickly. So if we now go to the file here, refresh. It, uh, it doesn't wait as long for the the intro, and when we go between the two, oh, that records it. That's now giving me an error saying there is no path. But um, yeah, you see how those all thing all the, those things sort of jump into places. There's you need a little bit of a, a time delay to put the thing on the animation and, and move it to the right place. So in a sense, that was one of the reasons why we. Um, have a delay between each with the, the groovity coming in. It's nice to reinforce the logo, I think, anyway. And um, the building of these things can take time. So the building of all of these noodles will add a noticeable delay. It's probably like a I don't know, two or three second delay at the beginning of the app. Whereas if we build them as we need them, they fit easily within the time of showing that uh, the groovity logo. So we're building only when we need, and then once they're built, they're built. We know, we know they're built. So that's how we've worked out this app. It's not. It's it's very quick to build this, but to build all of those paths and things that are following, like I said, it, it just takes a little bit of a delay to do that. So we split that delay across each one, like we made each one. Um, load as, as we got there. And now you don't notice any delay at all. Okay, so we've um, set that. We're wanting to reduce this path. It looks like it's the second meatball. Um, normally, uh, I didn't realize this, but normally we have a way to edit. It looks like we're going to have to edit them all. Interactive false. We'll set interactive true like that. And so now we'll be able to move those noodles, and then there's a matter of recording. Now, how did we set up the recording when it was in a loop? It looks like we've removed the recording, which is kind of too bad. Okay, we might play this one by eye then, by just adjusting these numbers. Normally, what we do is we move it, and then we record it, and we'll see that as we go into some of the other ones here. But if we've got our second noodle, we can probably estimate it uh, pretty well. Let's try it. Okay. Uh, right. So that's this one right here. Now, where are we starting from? I think we're starting from here. So this would be the zero point. 
And if I refresh here, we should see the yeah, there. So this one's the zero point. Uh, this is the one right here that needs to come down a bit. And um, let's see, is that going to affect it adversely? There it is staying in the range. Nah, it should be fine. So we'll just move the second point down a bit. So here's the second point, I think. Well, starting, what is the starting? Is that, do you think that's the X position of these? Because then it looks like, oh, right. They, they don't necessarily start how they, how they look. Oh, yes, they do. Well, this one crosses like that. But I'm not sure if those are the X positions along there. We can see. You see how we've got those start points in there? Meatball, add, animate. No, it would have been placing of the path here. Scale, center on the noodle container. It always. Oh, this is a starting percentage. So these numbers are as if the, the path is centered. And then this is how far away from center it is. So that's fine. So this is probably the second one here. Um, in which case, the first path right here, negative 886 is the height. So if we want to bring that up, say, 20 pixels, we'll go 66, negative 66, and refresh here. So that does not look like it did it. Uh, that should have come down here. So I don't think we got the right one. All right, let's check our path and uh, undo that. I wonder if we can just uh, re remove a path there. Okay, we got the right path, so that's it. But maybe they start at the bottom and head on up. And so perhaps it's the last point. So maybe this is the bottom. And then on this one, if this is the last point right here, I suppose that makes sense because 104. 105. No, maybe it doesn't make sense because that's higher than, than here. Uh, let's go minus 186 on that just temporarily and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, what did happen? Right. Oh, okay. It's a second. It's a second one that we want to do. Um, oops. Sorry about that. Uh, this is the first point. We don't care about the first point. It's the second point, which is right here, that we care about minus 139, and we want that to be minus 119. Sorry, it's early in the morning. Okay, there it is. It looks a little squashed, and we definitely have more room, so let's only minus that by 10. Oh yeah, yeah. where the heck was it? There? Minus 129. Is that right? Let me refresh here. Yeah, it's a little flattened, but that's good in the height, decent in the height. I mean, some of these other ones look a little flattened too. Uh, we could, <laughs> it's a little bit trickier. We, we want to basically do something like that, I think, like bring these in a little bit, uh, these bars. And so uh, we do have points for those. They're a little bit harder to understand what's happening there. That's in here. We've got a minus 35 and a, and a 35, so if we bring that to, uh, I think that's the length of it. Well, let's try bringing it to a minus 30, and minus 30 there, or just 30 plus 30, and we refresh. I think that's better, isn't it? And we probably, you know, what we did is brought these in a little bit, I think. Anyway, I think, I think that's probably good. Yeah, it looks all right. Ooh. Okay, so we fixed that one. That was trickier because of the sort of automation that we put on it. And now we need to turn that interactive back to false. So let's do it the easy way and come on down to uh, what's our next one that we want to fix? The jungle, for instance. So we go into the jungle. Now what we've done is we have a page.path and when we back in the index page here, because this will handle all of them, the index is sort of the general place. Back in the index place, we have on our, where'd it 
go. Here it is. On our right click, so that's the arrow right. If we're in build mode, we're going to say the current page, whichever page we're on, whatever path we've assigned to that page, we're going to record points. So record points is part of a blob or a squiggle. It's a method of the blob and squiggle. And true will pop up a window that shows us our points. So that allows us to adjust any path we're working on and hit that right arrow. I was too lazy to make another button or whatever. You could do it on a key down of some sort. But anyway, I just threw it on there. And when, it, when we're building, that's what it's going to do. Otherwise, we're doing the normal thing of going to the next page. And that relates to going from one page to another. OK, so uh, we go in here. We refresh. Another thing we were doing when we were built, oh, that that was a record, and since there isn't a current path, it's probably giving us an error. So I have to go backwards through. Uh, I was going to say, the other thing that I was doing as I was building was setting which one I want to see first. So as I was building um, the jungle here, then jungle was the one that came up first. All right, so the problem is that snake's going off. Oh, and I forgot to set the snake path interactive. So let's do that. We're going back to the jungle. We have a squiggle for the snake path, and we want to set interactive true on the snake path. Snake path is pretty easy. It's just two points here that makes that slight curve. So we refresh here. We go back to our jungle. Jungle, jungle, jungle. There it is. Um, there's the snake, and here's our our path. So we want to bring this back a bit like that. And that lets the snake stay closer. That seems good. Uh, the path looks a little bit stretched out on the on the tree at the moment, so we'll sort of bring bring it something like that, maybe. Let's see how does that look? That's pretty good. Let's let's move that in just a touch more. Yeah. Or is that too close to the bottom? Okay. So there we are adjusting the paths. Once we've got the path that we want, we hit the right arrow, and here's the, the path number. That, uh, we can, so we'll copy that and come back into here and paste it. So basically we are editing those paths in place which is quite easy to do. We just um, move them around until we like them and then we hit the, the record like that. Now I'm going to take this which is our, our path. I'm taking that out now. We're leaving the snake there and I'm going to the bug and the bug had a bug path. Oh, it's got it still in there as well, but the other one overrode it. So sometimes I was lazy and just left them as, as, as we build them. The latest one is the page path, so be it. And sometimes I would go back and remove that. Uh, okay, so we've got this squiggle, and we want to make that interactive. I set this back to false, so no longer will the snake path be interactive, but now we're making this path. So how is this for an exploration? You guys all right there? I don't know, sort of feel like I'm babbling on a little bit, but um, hopefully you're finding this interesting. So this one as well has an easy path, and we've now got the bug path set as the path, so let's try her out. We refresh here, and find our page. So uh, here is the problem. The bug's antenna is going off. Seems okay on that side. So let's just bring that in a little bit, and something like that, see if we've got it still going off. It's too bad. We could bring this branch up, but uh, then we run into the problem of the monkey might hit the branch. I don't want the monkey to hit the branch, so probably best just to move that in a little bit more. Okay, let's try it. That seems fine. Okay, we hit record, and we grab this copy, and paste it into the bug path. Boop, like so. I put the points at the bottom, that means we don't have to keep on worrying about the comma that would go on the end of that that keeps on getting removed. It's a pain. Remember when you use the Zim Duo technique of the configuration object, 
the order of these things don't matter. Okay, so we save that and uh, turn that interactive false, and we fixed up the we fixed up this one. Let's refresh. Let's see how it's looking. Oh, cute little bug, and the snake. All right, seems all right. I think the monkey shifted a little bit towards a tree there, but the 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 space in here has been compressed. The top has probably stayed where. Oh no, maybe the top went up as well. I'm not sure where we position these things. Sometimes they're positioned relative to the bottom. Sometimes relative to the top. Sometimes they're just centered. So I suppose that's all right. I actually thought it would be sort of neat to loop the vine over the tree, but that, that created a bit of problems with uh, depth, although we, we can do depth, but uh, it was just maybe too complex, more complex than needed. I don't think anybody's going to really care too much. We could have also extended the vine with a bit of green so that it's attached to something, and then yet only go that far. Um, we did that with one of the other ones. I can't remember which one. Where the path continues on, but we, oh, in the dinosaur. So here's the dinosaur. Um, you see how the path goes farther, but we kind of stop. I think we did it with a couple other ones too. Anyway, which, what's next? Um, boat was okay. Rocket ship Oh, rocket ship's not okay. Look at what's happened here. Our path, this is a fake path, kind of, uh, is is a bit broken. And we are doing the, note that we're doing the, um, the depth here, where it's coming up on the front. So we're running along this, this back ring here. It's coming along the front, but now it's going at the back. Isn't that cool? That little hook, by the way, is right where the blob joins. Uh, it's really difficult to be able to drag past a joint and sort of like loop. Maybe one day we'll have the brain power to figure out how to make that without a little glitchy thing. But um, anyway, <laughs> there it is. But uh, we need to move this path down now so that it matches this position because it's it's up too high i think uh, i think that's what it is yeah i'm pretty sure so we just want to move the moon path down a bit let's go do that so that was in not in the water it was in space do we have space we don't have space so we'll go find space space what is this that's the cdn we don't want our cdn here's groovity that might be small on your screen there, but anyway, you don't really need to see this. Space. So your space, and in space, we're wanting to move the moon path down. So uh, if we lost 20 pixels, maybe that's at five. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna go find it now. Come on, space. Uh, that's too much. Maybe it's half of it. It's also not uh, not flipping at the right time, but that's okay. That will work out once we get this. Maybe it was half of it. Maybe it's uh, 10, so let's try that. Looks like we went, um, and I can't go forward to get to it, so I'm gonna go backwards through these guys. Hey, there we go. Okay, so that seems uh, good now. So because we're following the path in the back, the path in the back goes behind the planet. Even though this pops up to come up on top, we can't make a blob, which is a single shape, actually do that. We can't have the back of the blob and the front of the blob go on either side of another object. So what we did is we faked another line right here another curve, uh, a squiggle, uh, right here that looks like it's extending around. Cool, huh? So you can examine the code for that if you ever want, and on we go. So that's good. The bus is good. This is good. What did? What else do we need to fix here? Something else, wasn't there? I think this is all right, that one. We fixed this one. Dinosaurs were good. 
fish were good. Rocket ship was good. Yeah, I guess uh, we're done. All right, it was just the noodle and the noodle and the snake and the bug, but then we also had to fix the moon. All right, so that is a brief look into uh, what we've been um, making now here at um, uh, Zim Explore. <laughs> Anytime I'm at the end here and I'm trying to figure out, um, I, I'm like pausing and going, it's because we have to fix our music. So <laughs> there we go. Some music's coming along to get the Zim Explore music going. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, we don't do any post editing for the most part throughout these. It's all trying to do live as a, a help speed things up. So, uh, come on in to Zim at ZimJS.com, and if you want to try this out, it's probably at ZimJS.com slash Groovity, Groovity, and you can try it yourself. Uh, we are trying to launch this as a PWA, which means it will be, it will be, uh, a bit, like a little message should pop up if you're on mobile. It doesn't on Apple, so we're working on another special message with Apple. Uh, with Apple, you have to save it to your homepage. So uh, that's what's up. ZimJS.com and come visit us at Slack. ZimJS.com/slash/slack. Ciao.